Hey everyone, <coughs> excuse me, Eric with Rockin' HTV 61. Tonight we're taking a little uh, jog off the beaten path and we're going to talk about how I used Kickstarter to create the Kenworth T370 project. Perhaps you've been following along as I've been doing that. And so basically just want to share with you what I did. Um, I've never used it before. Tonight was a, or this particular project was the first time I'd ever used it. So I'm just going to share with you what I learned about that. And uh, perhaps some of you will want to use it someday to uh, fund a project, and we'll find out. So let's get the house warmed up. We're going to say hello to Vaughn and Alan and Joseph. Hello, Joseph Johnson. And I saw a couple others um, uh, got in right away. Nathan is here. Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I think I saw Dustin there at the beginning. He was ready to get on that. Um, yeah, hello, Joseph. I'm kind of looking around my mich my holder here, so that's why I'm looking all over the place. There's Dustin. Good evening, Dustin. Welcome. Nice to see you. I uh, got a good crowd already. That's excellent. And uh, so basically, I'm going to just, I've got my Kickstarter account open, and I'm just going to walk through how I did it. And uh, it, it's... It's not bad. I mean, actually, this is kind of a practice. This was practice, so I can do... I got another one in mind. Anyway. Hello, Dylan. Good to see you. Good evening. Um, bifocals? <laughs> no, actually, my eye doctor said, uh, if I ask me if I wanted bifocals, because normally for close-up stuff, Alan, I don't even wear them. Like most of the day when I'm at my computer at the office, I don't have them on. But no, um, I got my phone in this cradle, and it's hard for me to... And I gotta look through it, but that I do it this way for your benefit, not mine. So that way, it's not weird when. Anyway, I guess actually tonight I could have done it differently. Oh well, live and learn. Uh, but so tonight I was at uh, yoga boot camp was the reason it's uh, we're 15 minutes late because it gets out at eight and I get home about 8:15 and I'm a mess. And uh, normally I work out from four to five <clears throat> by skipping lunch and going in early make up my time and I just leave early then I go work out at a at a boot camp class at the junior college and since my daughter had an activity I couldn't make that one and so I went to the evening session at a different place uh, all in an effort to try and stay healthy I guess and there's Dustin hey Dustin how are you excuse me Got the hiccups. Guess my uh, recovery drink's backing up on me. All right. Got that one in the bag. Well, it's been a good evening for, uh, I tell you, this yoga boot camp, man, don't let that name mislead you, because I tell you, that lady puts me through the paces. And then uh, we spend about 10 minutes just stretching at the end. Oh, man, I sleep so well after that. I'm all stretched out and limbered up. I'm a pile of goo. It's great. Anyway, I mean, yeah, I don't, like, enjoy it, enjoy it, but if you're going to work out, it's a good one. Anyhow, so that's kind of what we're up to tonight. Um, oh, look at that. It's 846. I guess we should start, shouldn't we? Okay. <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Eric with Rockin' HTV 61. Tonight, we're going to take a little jog down the beat, off the beaten path, and we're going to talk about how I use Kickstarter. Now, if you're not familiar with Kickstarter, it's not a new concept. It's been around for a few years. Well... In the scheme of things, it's new. But basically what it is, it's just a um, it's a website. You sign up for a free account. And then basically you have an idea churning around in your head or a product or something that you want to bring to market, but you need funding. So in the real world, people would go to banks, venture capitalists, or different places to get funding. And um, so what this does it allows people like you and me who are creators to have a crowd of people support a project and then you bring it to market. And that's what I did with the T370. So I had this idea um, that I wanted this cab because uh, another company says, hey, if you build this truck, we're going to buy it from you. And I said, okay, I'll do that. If I can get it done, I'll do it. And so I thought, let's just give this a go. Because I've read about it, I've supported Kickstarter projects in the past, um, and you know, always had a lot of success with it uh, as far as a buyer goes. And I thought, well, let's just—I don't know if it'll work. Don't know what I'm doing. Let's go give it a try. And hello, here we are. 
So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my phone just a little bit here and then I'll kick the screen around so you can see my computer screen and then I'll just kind of walk through it. And then you can ask questions as I go, all right? It's very informal. I'm not even going to begin to tell you that I did it right or even maximized what I could have done. Um, in my opinion, I think you need to have a whole different mindset to make this work to its fullest capacity. And I only scratched the surface with my project, okay? Um, if I were to do this again, well, and I, and I hope to be doing it again this year with a completely different thing, um, you know, I, I would be marketing and doing a lot of things different that I didn't do here. Okay, so, all right, let me move this thing around. And um, I'll try not to, whoops, get my fingers in the way. There we go. All right, now I can switch that around. Okay, so what you're looking at here is my, this is my Kickstarter account, I logged in already. The account is free, like I said, it doesn't cost you anything to open one and start a project. Um, what you would do is, um, let me see, can't quite see the top of my screen. Let's see if I can get you up here just a little farther. Okay, so you can't see everything I can see, but we're, we're in the neighborhood here. Let me see if we do it. There we go, that works better. So basically, once you log into your account, you're going to start a project. And then it's going to it's just a wizard that's going to lead you through a whole bunch of stuff. Now, obviously, um you can't come in here without something already well, I won't say that cuz I sh I'm not going to say that. Never mind. You're going to start a project, you're going to go through the the wizard and just follow the steps, okay? So your first page is what we're looking at here and basically you're gonna name the project whatever it is and this was you know model truck files for 3d printing I was kinda didn't really want to use the word Kenworth too much so Packer didn't come over and you know take a crap on me and not like me anymore and this was the actual truck that I used for the, the you know the page to get this thing going because this is the truck I'm actually going to make um, with the project that that I created here and then uh, so you're you got to put your own name on it you can't you can't be disguised you have to be a real person you can't hide behind some mysterious thing you gotta it's legit okay if you're not going to treat it legit then don't try. Okay, whoops, let me get rid of that. Ah. Just a second. There we go. So all of this will just, you know, you can see a little pencil up here. You, you can check those fields. So um, I had five backers. This Now, you wouldn't see this on your screen because obviously you wouldn't have any backers, but... I had five backers, they pledged $2,000 to help me bring the project to life. And this was something delivered by Kickstarter. Okay. And then every campaign, I mean, this is where we're at as the campaign page. There's facts, questions, updates. So as your project is coming to life, you can put updates in the backyard. Uh, any comments from visitors can be answered right there. Um, I created a video and so um, Kickstarter highly recommends using a video to, to so people can you know get to know your project and then this is where the the meat of the project comes into play over here now this is right here this thing here these are all pledges okay okay and then I'm going to step back just quickly here. My goal for the project was 1200 bucks because my designer in Denmark said, Eric, I can do this for a thousand euro, thousand euro to um, US dollars is approximately 1200 bucks. 
So um, I thought, thought, well, 1,200 is a good goal. I'll try for that. And you can see that 2,000 was pledged. Now that looks a bit misleading too, and I'll share with you what happened with that at the end. But um, yeah, so 1,200 bucks is what I my goal was. And here's the thing with Kickstarter. You either meet your goal and get funded, or you don't and you get no funding. So it's an all or none type of deal. So you wanna, you wanna make your goal hard enough to obtain, you, you, you wanna level a difficulty to it, because you wanna stretch yourself, but then again, you wanna make it realistic. So if I was gonna try and get 3,000 for this project, I don't, I don't know that I could have done it the way I did it. Okay, I'm not gonna say it couldn't be done, I'm gonna say, the way I did it probably wouldn't work out quite as well. Okay. Now, back to where I was on the pledges. Okay. So here's one of the pledge pledges that I had. Pledge number one, you could give five bucks and basically you just get my endless gratitude. That's just a giveaway. I saw this kind of a pledge on about other on other projects that I had researched as I was kind of trying to figure this out. And so that's that's why I did that because everyone else was doing it. I thought, why don't I? Okay, then here's one of the first levels of pledging. Okay, so basically for $150, you would get a day cab, universal frame, round tank, single axle, interior, dot STL printable files, uh, guaranteed to print and frost at ultra detail at shapeways.com. Now, you'd be keen to, to notice that I didn't say you could print it from say a desktop printer or from iMaterialize or from 3D hubs uh, because there's just too many variables. I wanted to limit my risk and exposure uh, and be able to guarantee that it's going to print someplace. Now, once you get the files and, I mean, they're yours, but you know, I wanted buyers or, or supporters to understand that this was the guarantee, but nothing else is a guarantee. Okay. And then uh, just another variation at 150 bucks. Uh, here's the crew cab for 150. Pledge uh, 250, you get two different cabs, crew and extended. Um, another variation another variation yet and then for five hundred dollars you get all of these files so again all of these files each person would own so that so once they support this project and I give them all these .stl files I have now given them a copy of everything that I would have in my Shapeway store they can have it in their Shapeway store or wherever they want to have it. That's up to them. It's their intellectual property now. Um, something I did skip over over here in the body of this project. You can go ahead and put your description, tell your own story, who you are, what you do, um, what your goal is and all these other things this just kind of creates credibility transparency for the people that love what you do okay Dustin says do you price the pledges or does Kickstarter you are in complete control of the project Dustin so all of these numbers over here I made up I put all the package packages together um, everything I created I mean, I came up with the goal, um, I did all the marketing, I made the video. Kickstarter is just the platform you get to use. But um, you have to do all the work. Um, after you get your whole project completed and put in place, your videos up, all your pledges, or excuse me, your packages, your pledges are all figured out and all your everything is done and spit shined and polished and all that then you have to submit it and Kickstarter actually evaluates the project to make sure that you're legit the projects legit and that um, you know 
uh, the people that support the project are going to get what was promised at the end of the period. And I had started this, uh, gosh, in November. And um, all the test prints were done by the beginning of January into December, if I recall. And then I delivered all the, pro all the files to the people that pledged in, uh, on the 15th of, September, uh, of January this year. So um, wasn't a perfect process for me. Had a couple of little glitches and hiccups here and there. But overall, um, w for not knowing what the heck I was doing in any capacity, and just winging it, uh, I'm very confident to do it again. You know, I would definitely, I would do this again. I mean, this was just a good way. Now, um, someone could say, well, Eric, you just sold, you just created competition for your project because, you know, in my Shapeway store, I'm going to have all these files, and now um, three guys have all of them, and another guy has 250 up. Excuse me, how'd that work? Two guys have all of them. No, three guys had it. I don't remember. Anyway, um, multiple people have all the files. You know, I had a couple people come in at the $500 level and bought all of this, okay? So now I've kind of I've created my own competition. But if you guys know my style and what, I mean, I don't believe in um, scarcity. I just don't, I don't, I can't believe that the world's not big enough for all of us to find a group of people that would buy our stuff. So I'm very confident that the three guys that came in at the $500 level, my clients and people that buy from me are not the people that would buy from them and vice versa. So that's the beauty of the world we live in that, you know, you can create an audience that loves you and the products you create and then sell to them and create a bunch of stuff for them. So here was, I had two backers at the 250 level and then three of them at 500. Um, now the reason I said earlier, I said this number up here, where'd it go? Um, this number here is misleading. That is because I had one guy not fulfill his pledge which is fine, you know. He came in at the $250 level. I did not get, you know, that amount of money. So, um, ta-da, that's what happened. So Dustin Walls asks, can they print them for themselves? Yes, they can do with their files whatever they wish. They can give them away, they could share copies with their buddies, they can print them, um, they can do whatever, they want with them it's their property so it's kind of like if I were selling um, you know model trucks <laughs> like so many dealers do um, once you buy the truck from the dealer it's yours and if you buy 10 of them you can do with them whatever the heck you wish so Nathan says yeah we can print them our, on Shapeways our, for ourselves and they can print them and resell them or have a store or whatever they want to do again they can do with them whatever they wish, and I am very comfortable with that. So let's go back here in, um, let's just go to the dashboard. I don't want to go to the um, backer report because you can see names of people. I don't want that. Okay, now for all of the convenience of having Kickstarter um, support, using this platform by using this platform they do take a percentage of the amount of money pledged okay and I forget what that is it's minimal for what it is um, but uh, they do take a small fee kinda like using PayPal PayPal takes a small fee for using the platform well, Kickstarter does the same thing out of the money you raise. So uh, back here in the analytics here, you can see, I mean, this is just a report of, of the summary where people came from. You can see 500 of it came from Kickstarter. 1,000 of it was external referrals. 500 was uh, pledged via custom 
referrals. And you can see kind of what day they came in. Looks like I started this in October, so October 26th is when I launched this project. Um, the refer, I had two refers from, I had three actually from Facebook. Um, just different stuff there. You can see how many people, how many times your videos are played, kind of like on YouTube. Um, you can see the reward popularity. So, yeah. So that's kind of how the way it works. Um, again, it, it's it's not it's not bad. It's not bad. It's it's okay. It was a I mean it was fun. Like I said, I, I would definitely do it again. Um, and there are tons and tons of. Um, tutorials to help you along on this so they don't leave you out in the cold um, so I mean the amount of information to they, I mean they want you to succeed right so um, they provide as much information and good tutorials on how to do this and best practices and all this because they make Kickstarter makes money as you make money. So it's to their credit to help you um, be successful. Okay, now they don't do the work for you, of course. You have to do the work. I had to do all the work. I mean, I pr like I said at the beginning, I produced my video, I wrote all the copy, I created all the, the, you know, the pledge amounts and the different packages people could buy. That was all on me. But it is to their credit to help you write good copy and to do some of those things that um, make you successful. And then one thing that I did notice is uh, there was a bunch of people spammed me. Uh, they would email me and post messages here on the uh, right there on the project. What they were doing was they had there are companies that will help uh, market your your project. That way more people can see it and then support it. So, but they all do that for a fee. And I once I kind of met my goal is like oh well I'm done you know. <laughs> Not the right attitude to have. As I said early on in the beginning, um, uh, I, if I had, when I do it again, I'll do things differently. And I knew this was a niche audience, a small market, so I really didn't work too hard. But for the next project I have in mind I want to do, it's a much bigger project, and, and obviously I'll have to do a much better job than I did this time. So Ward says, uh, where do we find out what you're looking at? Oh, I got here late. Well. I've kind of been there already, Ward. Um, if you go back and watch the replay, you'll get the idea. Um, but it's just that Kickstarter project, and actually there's probably a live link someplace in one of the groups where I promoted it, especially in the lab. So if you go back there, you can you can see the exact project there. So, all right. Um, kind of a messy kind of overall observation of of the project and how I did all this. If you've got questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Hey Heath, how are you doing? Good to see you. Um, like I said, um, it, was, it was a good project. I, I just I learned so much about all of this. I mean, it was uh, it was good for that. And then even on the 3D process, uh, my designer in in uh, Denmark or his. It, anyways, he says um, he quoted me one price. The original price he quoted me was seventeen hundred to do all the three D work that I'd ask him to draw. And then, as we got up to this price, so I shot him down at the beginning, and then I came back and begged for him to start it again. And he says, um, "I can do it for a thousand, but go buy a two hundred dollar file at this website, and that makes things easier for him." Okay. So I spent two hundred bucks initially. Uh, to buy one file for Peter, and then he charged me a thousand euro, twelve hundred. So I'm in this fourteen hundred bucks, but I made seventeen fifty on the project. That's how much I I collected once everything smoke cleared and all that. Um, so seventeen fifty was the amount actually collected from the pledges because one guy didn't fulfill his pledge. So that left me enough room for all the test prints and uh, any other little things that kind of popped up and 
cost money, you know, Facebook ad, whatever else like that. So um, it, it worked out better than I expected. So, And we got another cool model here in the market, so that's even better yet. And one thing nice about this project was the guys that actually bought the files, they got a bunch of extra bonus stuff just because Peter went crazy and gave me a whole bunch of extra things I didn't even ask for. <laughs> so that worked out well for the guys that bought in because I just shared them with them too. I was like, yeah, just a bonus for playing along. All right, it is about 10 after, or 9.05 or so, 9.08. Uh, do you guys have questions about what I did here? Um, Again, I know it's kind of a down and dirty thing, pretty quick. Um, if you do want to do one of these projects, do not be afraid. Dive in, go for it, you can't screw up. Uh, as I said in the beginning, Kickstarter is all or nothing. So if you put a thousand dollar goal and only 800 is pledged, or let's say 950 is pledged, you get no money. So that's kind of the way Kickstarter works. It's all or none, so it's up to you to put together a good project, um, great, um, packages for the supporters to pledge it for and then do your best to market it and make it make it great um, Heath asked are you gonna add the spoke wheels to the frame well you know when I was in the uh, Kenworth T370 uh, PDF that I downloaded and then shared with my designer there wasn't a spoke wheel in there <laughs> but you know that's a great that's a great thing because actually I'd love to have some spoke wheels that are the same size as that Chevy C60 so I can make a tandem a lot easier than what I'm doing right now. That'd be a good idea. So if I do another project, uh, I'll certainly, I'll probably do something like this again because that would just, it just worked great. So um, any other questions here? I'm going to kind of start winding this down. If uh, if you don't have another question or something. Ah, Heath is all over the spoke wheels. Those D Daytons are cool. I just, I love them. Especially the ones on the Neo Chevys. Those are cool. They did a spot on job with those. Um, yeah, and the wheels that came with this, Peter did a phenomenal job. I got two versions, a solid wheel and then a hollow wheel. So all the holes in the spokes or excuse me in the steel you can actually see through them and it just makes them look more realistic so when you put take your chrome pin and and paint over them they look fantastic oh good he says he was he got to see this Heath got to see this out in Lamar Colorado at the toy show when I was there a couple weeks ago so we got to see the real version of it so that was pretty cool all right Okay, and Nathan, he was one of the supporters. I didn't name names. I didn't know who wanted to be known and not, but he said he was happy with what he got for helping fund it. And I appreciate the support, Nathan. You helped make it come to life. So that was a big deal. That was pretty awesome. Thank you for that. All right. Well, guys, hey, I'm going to wind this up. And um, I'm always looking for ideas for new shows. So if you have something that is on your mind that you want to see or... Uh, Maybe you need the uh, the crash test dummy to go out and try something because you might be uh, afraid to. Let me know, and I would love to consider different things to, you know, for the 2018 season. So always be thinking about that. Um, I know there's just tons and tons of videos, just basic stuff. You know, how to swap swap visors or you know easy things. I mean, easy stuff for a lot of us that have been in this a little bit but maybe not so easy for other guys that are just getting started and don't know where to go. So, always be thinking of that. How to avoid cracked paint. Oh, yeah, that's a... <laughs> I don't know how to answer that, Heath, because I get cracked paint. I just melted something the other night. That was terrible. <laughs> yeah, those two paints didn't like each other at all. Okay, guys, well, I appreciate the support. Appreciate you watching, commenting, and sharing the videos. I noticed in other groups, you guys are saying, hey, go over to Rockin' HTV, check out the videos. I appreciate that, uh, referring people out there. And, um, you know, it just helps more guys uh, get models they want, and that's a big deal. That's pretty cool. So that's what, I, that's what I'm doing all this for. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. 
Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and share, and all that other good stuff, and I will catch you next time. Bye.